My name is Harlan Svoboda, and we're at the United States National Arboretum in Washington, D.C. The United States National Arboretum, part of the U.S. Department of Agriculture's Agricultural Research Service, is recognized both nationally and internationally as a leader in the development and management of cultivated plant biodiversity. Some of our research foci include the advancement of new technologies for the floral and nursery industries, development of superior landscape plants through genetic improvement programs, and the collection and distribution of ornamental plant germplasm. Located in Northeast Washington, D.C., the National Arboretum's 446 acres of pristine green space are home to more than 20 gardens and collections, such as the National Bonsai in Penjing Museum and the Azalea Collections, as well as iconic landmarks like the National Capitol Columns. But beyond the exterior attractions that more than 600,000 visitors enjoy every year, the National Arboretum also has a world-class collection of preserved plant material in the form of herbarium specimens. Within the main herbarium, there are approximately 800,000 specimens that make up the core repository documenting plant research conducted by the Department of Agriculture and one of the designated Mission Critical Systematics collections in the agency. These specimens represent over 230 years of plant collecting and come from nearly every corner of the globe. Because of the size of this collection, the herbarium is separated into two cool storage rooms on two floors of the administration building at the Arboretum. The lower herbarium houses all of our angiosperm, or flowering plant specimens, from asters to zizanias, while the upper herbarium includes the lycophytes, ferns, conifers, and related taxa. The lower herbarium is mostly in compactors and contains over 19,000 shells for storage of flat specimens. Each aisle has the capacity to hold about 67,000 specimens, depending on their bulkiness. The organization of the herbarium generally follows the arrangement of the Dalatorian harm system, but several groups have already been converted to more up-to-date classifications, such as the linear angiosperm phylogeny group system. This will allow us to improve our inventory and better serve the research community. The collection is further divided into color-coded geographic regions based on where the plant was collected. For example, collections made in South America will be found in red folders throughout the herbarium. A particular interest to the National Arboretum are plants in cultivation. Thus, about 25 to 30 percent of the entire herbarium is of cultivated origin, such as specimens of flowering cherries from the tidal basin or crepe myrtle cultivars from the research plots at the Beltsville Agricultural Research Center. This is an exceptionally high proportion of cultivated material when compared to most other herbaria around the world, and something we take great pride in. We also prioritize the acquisition of specimens of crops, crop wild relatives, invasives, novel hybrids, new introductions, and other economically important taxa. Vouchers of plants growing on the Arboretum grounds are well represented in the herbarium and often complement the living material by providing origin data or morphological characters necessary for proper identification. Some of our other notable collections include plants from the grounds of the White House and the U.S. Capitol, ARS botanical explorations overseas, critically endangered species, and over 4,000 types and cultivar standard specimens. Many of our specimens are unikits, or gatherings with no known duplicates. The herbarium also possesses several exacati, or bound volumes of plant samples, dating back to the 1860s. In addition to the flat sheets, the collection also contains unmounted fruits and cones that may correspond to a pressed specimen. These objects are labeled, bagged, and kept in boxes alongside the plant families that they support. Unknown to many, the National Arboretum actually also houses a separate herbarium, the United States National Seed Herbarium. Though our two herbaria both reside in the same building and share resources, each is curated and maintained independently from the other. The National Seed Herbarium, which was originally formed by the USDA's Animal and Plant Health Inspection Service, or APHIS, contains nearly 150,000 samples of seeds and fruits. These seeds are not maintained in a living state like a seed bank, but rather they are preserved in perpetuity as a reference. The collection is used largely by APHIS scientists who rely on it for proper identification of non-native seeds or fruits entering the United States that could pose a threat to the country's agro-security. From the smallest to the largest seeds in the world, the National Seed Herbarium represents a treasure trove of botanical material unmatched in scope and size. In addition to specimens, seeds, and other plant material, the herbarium also maintains a small archive of analog resources related directly to the botanical collections. 
This archive contains handwritten field collection notebooks, original line drawings based on our specimens, photographic slides, and even carbonized plant artifacts from the ancient city of Pompeii. We also store primary data connected to our USDA plant introduction vouchers. In an effort to make these invaluable botanical resources cared for by the National Arboretum more accessible to the rest of the world, we recently embarked on an ambitious journey to digitize all 800,000 specimens in the main herbarium. This project includes imaging every single sheet using a high-resolution camera and conveyor system, which, with two operators, can produce about 5,000 images per day. At this rate, the imaging portion of the project is expected to finish by the end of 2021 or early 2022. Data from the specimen labels will be transcribed using a crowdsourcing platform and, together with the images, will be made available online for access by researchers and the public alike. This virtual herbarium, which is currently under development, will serve the botanical community in new and exciting ways and allow our outstanding preserved collections at the United States National Arboretum to share the spotlight with its equally impressive living collections. Hello. Thank you for joining me on that tour of the United States National Arboretum's collections. My name is Harlan Svoboda, and I'm the curator of the Herbaria. As you saw from the tour, the National Arboretum is well known for its historic landmarks and stately living plant collections. But out of the public's eye, we also maintain dead plants as part of the USDA's core, mission-critical herbarium collection. I wanted to talk just briefly about the collection's history, as well as the National Arboretum and USDA more generally. The United States Department of Agriculture was formed in 1862 by President Abraham Lincoln. It was established to procure, propagate, and distribute among the people new and valuable seeds and plants. People often ask me, is the Arboretum part of the Smithsonian? The answer is no, but we do have an intertwined past. In 1862, herbarium specimens did already exist as part of the newly formed USDA, housed in the old patent office building that you see in the bottom left photo. In 1868, the nascent Smithsonian Institution turned over their herbarium to the USDA and transferred it to the newly built USDA headquarters, circled in red in the right photo, but it remained the property of the Smithsonian. By 1896, the Smithsonian requested the herbarium be returned to them, plus the USDA's material, to become the National Herbarium. From there, the collections split and merged a couple more times, and finally the two collections, the Smithsonian's National Herbarium and the Department of Agriculture's Herbarium, were permanently separated and remain so to this day. The National Arboretum itself was established in 1927 by an act of Congress and between the years of 1929 and 1934, surveying and plant collecting on the grounds of what would become the Arboretum took place. These specimens, which literally represent the Arboretum's roots, are still housed in the herbarium today. In 1942, the Beltsville Agricultural Research Center, or BARC, was completed and the herbarium moved there. In 1964, the administration building at the National Arboretum was built and the herbarium then moved again, where it remains to this day. Now I'd like to delve a little deeper into some of the more interesting assets of our collections. Many of you are probably familiar with the crepe myrtle. You might even have one or two growing in your yard. What you might not know, though, is that one in three crepe myrtles in the nursery trade were developed at and released by the National Arboretum. The herbarium still maintains an extensive collection of these important ornamental plant vouchers. We have plant vouchers collected from the grounds of the United States Capitol, including witness trees, memorial trees, and other plants of national importance. This individual you see here is from a seedling gifted to the United States government that was growing at the Anne Frank House in Amsterdam. We also have unique specimens from the White House. In these photos, you can see some of our staff identifying and managing azaleas on the White House grounds. Our collection also includes historical specimens going back to FDR's first term in office. One of the USDA's major initiatives is the introduction of plants from around the world that may be of importance to the United States. 
These plant introductions have been going on since 1898 and continue through today. We maintain vouchers for many of these introductions, sometimes representing the last vestige of that genetic fingerprint. Two of the department's most influential botanical explorers were David Fairchild, who you see in the center of the photo, and Frank Meyer on the right. Meyer was a Dutch immigrant and spent years traveling through China searching for interesting plants to bring back to the United States. He was responsible for over 2,500 plant introductions, including the Meyer lemon, which bears his name. The USDA's Agricultural Research Service has more than 90 federal locations across the country, and those that actively carry out plant research often send vouchers documenting their work to the National Arboretum for permanent preservation. A large and valuable component of our collection is the Martindale Herbarium, which was purchased by the Arboretum in 1964. By the end of the 19th century, the Martindale collection was one of the largest private herbaria in the United States, with more than 80,000 specimens in 10 bound Exocati volumes. These are now an incredibly important part of our herbarium. The herbarium is also the principal repository for vouchers of the North America China Plant Exploration Consortium, or NACPEC, expeditions. Thousands of plants have been brought back from China through these trips, which have been ongoing since 1993, and represent an important international partnership between our two nations. The National Arboretum is also an integral part of the National Plant Germplasm System, which aims to collect, conserve, and distribute plant germplasm throughout the world. We are stewards of both the living and the preserved collections. One of the more unusual assets in our collection are carbonized plant artifacts from Pompeii, Herculaneum, and Oplantis after they were destroyed by Mount Vesuvius in AD 79. These artifacts represent pioneering work to study the ancient gardens and other uses of plants by these ancient societies. The United States National Seed Herbarium, as you saw on the tour, is comprised mostly of vials of seeds that are used by scientists to identify unknown samples entering the country. If you've ever used the USDA plants database online, you may have seen photos of seeds for some of the species records. Those seeds are actually from accessions preserved in the National Seed Herbarium. This is a very exciting time for us at the National Arboretum, as we have just recently invested in a mass digitization project to make our 800,000 specimens more accessible to the rest of the world. It's a very involved process that requires a great deal of preparation for the specimens, but with the team's capture rate of nearly 5,000 images per day, the project has already had a few milestones. On February 22nd of this year, we officially began the project. By mid-April, we had already imaged 100,000 specimens, and in late May, we passed the 200,000 mark. For the next portion of this project, we will be relying on crowdsourcing to transcribe the label data and include this with the images on our new virtual herbarium portal. Stay tuned for more exciting updates as the project progresses. And with that, I would like to thank you for your time, and I hope to see you someday soon at the United States National Arboretum.